welcome to Space Fifth News. I'm Dan Thurot, your correspondent. And as you can see, today we are here at SaltCon, the largest Mountain West board game conference in the Mountain West. It's impressive, Dan. It sure is, Steve. Now, as you can see, it may be a little overcrowded right now, but if you come earlier, there will be fewer people. And because we have come today, they have presented us with this tote bag. Why don't we come in here and examine its contents? So we've got a little manual thing. We've got this, I think you put this down in the case, in the bathroom, in case of a rendezvous. <laughs> We have a bingo, SaltCon bingo, Steve. Very nice. Here we go. Like billing information. <laughs> That's important, Dan. You wouldn't want to get kicked out of this oh, no. bustling crowd. This, this venue is possibly the most important attraction to come to Salt Lake City since Disney on Ice. Now, they also gave us these complimentary dice. I mean, I'm just a standard of production dice. Back to you at the studio. All right, we're out. All right, once again, I'm Dan with Space Fifth News. We're here with Raymond Hayes, main designer for War Command, the only game where you're going to be commanding a war. And it's coming out in May for in May. iOS devices. Yep, on the iOS devices. Then we're hopefully going to be coming out on the website and um, on Android within six months. Okay, so you mentioned a little bit about some of the inspirations that you had. Uh, you mentioned so Magic. Um, I felt a pretty cool magic uh, vibe back there, drawing a card every turn. Also, um, so you mentioned Stratego. Could you tell us more about your inspirations along those lines? Well, I've um, actually, my favorite uh, battle board game is an old game called Battle Masters. Mm -hmm. And um, I really, that got me into the, the, the war board games. And I just, I really prefer the war board games over CCG, but I thought if you could bring in the, the randomness of the CCG and then something to change and, and be able to actually come with two different or several different different battle plans as to how you're going to make this happen. The cards bring in the ability to, to change stuff up, to have a totally different battle plan than somebody else. Um, and, and that was kind of what I came to. Cool. Awesome. One of the things I noticed was that you had some really good art on the cards. So what was the process there? Um, your friend Malice uh, pointed out that you had quite a few illustrators working on this project. Yeah, yeah. And that was probably one of the things I'm most proud of. Um, in getting illustrators, I, I um, got illustrators from all over the world, um, browsing, looking for young illustrators that had a, a, lot, of, a lot of skill. and. That's what we end up getting is most of our illustrators are in college still. Some of them just now are starting up their own businesses. Um, really, really cool stuff. Um, and then we have an excellent art director, Sean Mitchell. Um, and having a good art director with these young artists just, just turned out amazing art. Awesome. Very proud of it. Cool. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for your time, Raymond. All right. Thank Again, you. this is War Command and Space Fifth News. Dungeon Heroes is a two-player strategy game. Now, depending on uh, what side you're going to play, is really going to be what kind of an experience you get to have. The game plays in about 15 to 20 minutes, which is really nice and quick and light for, for a dungeon crawl. Um, typically, dungeon crawls are going to take you, you know, obviously anywhere from an hour to two, three, four hours. This one is compact. You take it with you to work. You bust out a game with your buddy at lunch. You finish it up really quick. You're dying to play again, so you, you flip it around and play the other side. The dungeon board is playing a tile placement memory game while the hero party is playing a deduction and press your luck game. So, um, the dungeon lord starts off, he starts uh, laying out some tiles that consist of monsters, traps, items, treasures, 
pretty much everything you'd expect to find in a dungeon. The dungeon lord starts building the dungeon turn by turn, while the hero party gets to explore the dungeon, try to overcome these traps using their heroes and the unique abilities that they possess, trying to use them in, in uh, you know, with synergy to accomplish the end goal. Each hero is going to feature one very streamlined ability. The wizard can reveal tiles. The warrior is the only unit that can slay monsters. The rogue is the only unit that disarms traps, and the cleric heals. So depending on, on how you'd like to put that all together, you get four actions a turn, but you can only take a maximum of two actions per individual hero. Uh, essentially, the gist of the game is the hero party is looking to collect three out of the four treasures in the game. One of them is for free if you can reach the back of the dungeon. Anywhere on this is going to get you that free, that free treasure. The other three treasures are mixed into the dungeon pile that the dungeon lord actually has to place. Um, so, which gives the dungeon lord an opportunity to kind of play a bit of a bluffing game as well. Are you going to hide the treasure in plain sight? Or are you going to tuck it away in the back of the dungeon, maybe where your opponent can, can predict it? So uh, that's, that's about the gist of the game. Uh, right now we have the base game and the expansion set. The expansion set is actually two in one. It's got the Lords of the Undead, as well as the Dragon and the Damsel. The expansion set introduces new monsters, new heroes, new mechanics, new tiles, as well as a nice cloth drawstring bag. Space Fifth News, we are the only coverage of SaltCon. Um, I, this is the halftime show, but I, I think we've, I'm pretty sure we've interviewed everybody, don't you think, Steve? I do, I do, Dan. Here, let's uh, go through the booths here. Yes, let's look at, as you can see, there's some exciting stuff happening over in the southeast corner. Um, now looking at the northeast corner, they're selling some games. Just one one booth selling games. No. Um, that's me. People we talked to were over there. Yeah. You can see some people playing uh, board games with their loved ones. Sometimes with strangers. <laughs> All right. And that's Space Biff News bringing you the only coverage of SaltCon, the largest Mountain West conference for board games in the Mountain West. Back to you, Steve. production, kind of like, you know, have mana and magic. Um, basically, you use your villagers to build other buildings like, like the Thieves' Guild or the Barracks or the Mage Tower. Those you use to hire, train your villagers into more elite guys, like the Elven Longbow Elite. That way you build up your army. When you build up your army, you have to march them over to your opponent, wipe them out. Um, it's a game of rows, so you start out on your row, then there's a row in between, which is no man's land, and then your enemy has his row. So you got to march him across no man's land to your enemy's village to do your ransack. Um, the two main gameplay plays is just annihilation, where you take him off the face of the map, kill him down to the last man, last building, last villager, or an assassination match, where everyone starts out with the hero, and you assassinate the hero. Oh, great. That's what so, they say behind the game. Awesome. So what kind of a playtime is it? Playtime on Annihilations, anywhere from about an hour to four. It's turn-based strategy. Kind of depends on how good everyone is and what they're doing. Assassinations, anywhere from usually 15 minutes to about an hour. The fastest game I've seen played in six turns. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. That's it. Alright, again I'm 
Dan Thurup with Space Biff News, and we're here with Rob and Audrey introducing the new game Mayhem. So why don't you take us Sure. Um, our company is Midnight Campaign. Uh, we're here at SolCon introducing our products for the first time out here. Uh, we're really excited to be here. Um, a couple of different things that we're working on right now. Our, our main project is the Mayhem role-playing game. This is a tabletop role-playing game, uh, swords and sorcery, fantasy stuff. Um, what sets it apart from other games in a similar genre is the timing mechanic. We use a, a combat system that's built around um, the action speeds of player of the player's actions. So, for example, a dagger will act faster and more often, but do less damage than a great axe, which will hit harder and slower. Okay. That adds a lot of depth to the strategy and tactics, um, which lets us kind of streamline a lot of the other rules, so that the game runs really quickly with a lot of depth. Um, there's a lot of different kinds of characters that go along with the game in terms of races and talents, and that's our that's our main project. We also have a, game, a card game that we're, we're going to be publishing soon that's called War Mage. This is a large group card game. Uh, we found that when we got players together, um, once we got past four or five players, there wasn't a, weren't a whole lot of games out there to play. Um, so we designed a, a team-based strategy game that you build teams of two to three players, two to three characters, and kind of optimize your strategy by choosing different uh, characters and how they interact. And then you duke it out with the other team, and the last team standing wins. Um, during, along the way, people trade items back and forth, equip stuff for their specific character strategy, and, and it plays out um, in about a half an hour. It's a pretty quick, fun game that accommodates a lot of people. What is people's problem? You can sell this for like 80 bucks. Alright, so I'm Dan Thurot with Space Biff News, the only exclusive coverage of SaltCon. I can't imagine why. So here I am with Brock from the Plaid Hat Games Plaid Hat Core. Yes. Is that the way to yes. phrase it? Yes, Plaid Hat Core. And uh, I consider Brock a personal friend because we have played some of the wars. Plaid Hat is one of my personal favorite developers. And right here I have my favorite team, the Jungle Elves, versus Steve will be playing as the uh, Fallen Kingdom. Yeah, not a chance, buddy. <laughs> so, not a chance. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what should be here and introduce the games for Plaid Hat? You know, really, I'm just kind of the street team for Plaid Hat Games. I'm a volunteer. I love their games enough that I take time every every month. And I was lucky enough to, to be able to come to SaltCon um, to to show off their games. Um, I we played a game of Mice and Mystics, which is a cooperative dungeon crawl um, that uh, that was a lot of fun. We we won as the mice. And then I've got right now Summoner War set up, which is absolutely my favorite game, and I I say that getting no compensation from Planet Hat Games. Um, so, so I noticed you don't have City of Remnants to show off today. That's correct. What a tragedy, right? So so do you not get the games for free? As it's, they, uh, it's, uh, it's not released yet. It's, oh, I have it. It has been released for those who pre-ordered. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, since this is uh, also much like not having Summoner Wars for Android, as, you know... Steve! Alright, sorry. <laughs> no, yes, get on it, Colby. Yes. <laughs> so, so awesome. So, so you, you like I, both their games? I, I love their games. I I own Dungeon Run. I no longer own it, but that's a good one. That's no longer available. Dungeon Run 2, supposedly in I hear that's coming soon. But uh, City of Remnants has reached those who pre-ordered it. It should be to stores, as far as I understand, within the next month or so. It should be in my waiting hands in the next month or so. And then... Bioshock Infinite. Is, right, yeah, that's a big Siege, license. Yeah, Siege of Columbia is the, the board game. And that's, that's a huge get. Right. For a, so do you know any secrets on that that we can share with the uh, Not that the I can business? share. Not that you camera. can share. Oh, man. Because, uh, you know, we're, I don't know anything. We'd, really like, we'd look really like that exclusive Colby. Right. Yes. So, Because <laughs> I know he's watching. Yes. The well, live stream. You know, I know. Maybe.
All right, we're back. I'm Dan Therat with Space Piff News, the exclusive coverage of Salt Cloud for some reason. We're here with Ryan, is it Lockett? It's a uh, Lockett. Lockett, all right. And uh, as many of our viewers already know, Ryan is something of a Kickstarter darling. And uh, one of the people I was personally most excited to meet here at SaltCon, I'm, uh, I'm already blushing. Yeah. So why don't you tell us about Eight Minute Empire and City of Iron, both coming out in June? Uh, yeah, around June. So this is an 8-bit empire. It's a really quick, uh, easy to play area control game. Uh, and it comes with this board. Uh, this is an expansion board. Uh, but the point of the game is to collect cards and collect different goods. And when you collect the goods, they also let you move armies around the map and build cities. And the player who has the uh, most uh, countries uh, gets the most points in the wins. And you also get extra points for controlling uh, sets of goods, so you have to balance the two. But it's very quick. It, it doesn't take exactly eight minutes, but uh, you know, it's, uh, right. it's a short game. So I think the question on America's mind is how many minutes of an empire is <laughs> uh, Well, you know, I can play I can play that. We usually play in eight minutes. When we play with Mike, I see new people that might take a break. Okay, cool. So this is one I'm, I'm looking forward to. I, didn't kick, I kick started this one. Yeah. Also this one. So why don't you tell us about City of Iron? Yeah, so, so this is uh, the box for City of Iron. Um, it is a fantasy game uh, where players build up a nation in sort of a steampunk style world. They, they have to build up different buildings and they uh, uh, hire mercenaries to help them you know, explore different lands and, and uh, gain money. And, and the player who makes the best combination of cards wins the game. And it takes about 90 minutes or so. Cool. So we're looking forward to you. Yeah. So do you have any uh, any other Kickstarter successes coming up? Uh, I hope to put a new game on Kickstarter sometime in the early summer. It's, it's actually right here. It's this game. Freedom's Wars. Uh, this, is, uh, this isn't a final title, but I'm pretty sure that's what it'll be. It's a battle on an alien world. It's like a science fiction sort of a game. So I'm really excited about that. Cool. Great. Well, thanks for your time, Ryan. Yeah. And uh, back to you.